So in this video, you're going to learn one way of creating an endless runner game in GDevelop. Um, I've already got a new scene set up, and I've created a uh, object called Floor that has it's a tiled sprite, and I gave it the uh, platform behavior, which you've seen in my other videos. And then I have the character that was our object that we started here, and have him named Hero. Let's give him the behavior, add a behavior of being a platform character. We want to turn off the default controls because in an endless runner, your player doesn't actually move. The platforms will, and but all he'll be able to do is jump. And we're going to set him able to jump a different way. And then we also we are going to animate this. So I'm going to add animation. This will be our uh, our running animation, and you can import all of them, all the frames at the same time by holding the shift key to select them and then open see it brings in all the different tiles and we'll do one more animation for when he jumps because he needs to jump over the gaps so here's jump all right and that'll be animation number one running will be animation zero jumping will be animation one let's click apply let's bring in a piece of floor put it to where we wanted to start about five blocks is a, uh, about as long as I'm going to make the longest piece of platform. You can see up here in the top right, I have the show grid on. You can toggle it right here. It helps kind of doing the layout, make it easier. Drag our, because everything kind of snaps together. So there's our hero. Let's do another floor piece. Just have it do kind of a tiny gap. Start them off easy. Bring in another one, maybe make him jump up a little bit. Now, you might think that one way to do this would be to have your platform pieces spawn over here, have them spawn you know, at a random width and then a random height, and then when they get to the other end of the screen, off the screen, you destroy them. You, you could do that, but that might cause some performance issues after a while, once you've done that several times. So what we're actually going to do is we're just going to um, already have uh, about 10 or so platforms created and laid out, and we're just going to recycle them so that when, when these platforms get over here past the end of the screen, they'll jump back to the end of the line. Now as we're laying these out, we don't want it to get too high. Um, you can see over here how high it is. So 288, 256. That's probably about as high as we want to go so our player can't like jump off the top of the screen. And then conversely, we don't want to go too low because we want him to be able to make this jump because we are going to have these come at, um, move. When they move back over here, we're going to have them at different heights. So we want the player to be able to make the gap. So 416, that's probably about as low as we'll go. Let's move this one over. How far over are we? We're about 1248 over. Let's go a little further over. You can drag this little blue handle here to see more this way. Alright, so we'll have our last, that'll be our last one this way. Back over behind our runner, let's add a couple pieces, because they're the ones that are going to uh, come first, get recycled first. That one there. Have another one here. Where's that about? Negative 224. So that'd be good if, because about 256, this is where we'll have them recycle. So we'll have this one start right before it gets recycled. <clears throat> so if you check it out now, everything looks okay. Our guy's running. Uh, well, oh, he only ran once, so we need to fix that and nothing's moving. So let's go back to our animation, edit object, and we do need this to loop. And 
Let's click apply. And we need to tell it to jump since we don't have the, the standard controls. We'll need to do our own. So add condition. And that condition, let's look at the mouse touch. Let's say this is a mobile game. Mouse button pressed or touch held. And button to test for, we'll do the left button on the mouse. Add action. Well, we want to jump. So simulate jump button. And that's our hero. Click OK. And we want it to switch when he jumps. We want it to switch to the jump animation. So animation. Play anima change animation by name. So let's just say change animation hero because we know set it to we know the value was one for jump. So now if we demo it, player's running. We can press the button. He jumps. But he doesn't go back to running. So let's fix that. Let's add another action. This one, we want him, whenever he's on a platform, we want him to run. So we're going to test for when he's on a platform. And you can do that in the uh, platform behaviors. Is on floor. We want hero. <clears throat> so when hero is on floor, and we're going to do the opposite of this. I'm just going to copy this, paste it, and change that to a zero. And I'm going to test for one more condition also, because um, our player is going to be able to fall off of a platform and we don't want him running in the air when he's falling so we'll just reuse the um, jumping animation for that so we'll do another condition platform behavior again is falling and we want it to be the jump one so we'll copy <clears throat> and paste that now we need our um, platforms to move. So we're going to do another condition. And on this one, let's, um, we want it to happen all the time. So we don't need a condition, we'll just need the action. <clears throat> and there's a couple of different ways to make stuff move, but we're going to do this by changing the, uh, the X value. So position X, X position of an object, that object is floor, and we're going to subtract because we want it to move to the left, and let's, what's a decent speed, like 4, click OK, play, so our player can jump, but you see there's a problem, when he's on a platform, the platform is moving him backwards, and so he quickly goes off screen. So we need our player, <coughs> when he's on the floor, to move the opposite direction. Luckily we already are testing for the floor, so we can add action here. And we'll uh, essentially just do the uh, opposite of what we did to that. So that was the X position. But this time we want the hero, and we want it to add four. So now our player pretty much stays in one place unless he hits a, a wall. But this isn't really a very good way to create a program because if you ever want to adjust the speed you'd have to change it in two spots. Um, so instead let's use a variable. So we got a new condition, and we're going to declare our variable. We'll declare it at the start of the scene. Value of a scene variable. Um, that variable, let's call it speed. We're going to set it to 4. 
Now we need to change this. Instead of four, we'll do variable value of a scene variable and the variable speed. Click done. And just copy that. So that now we can also change this for. There. So now, if you ever need to adjust speed, you can just change that speed variable to make the game faster. Like if you wanted to get harder as it goes along, um, or you know whatever, you don't have to change it in, in both places. So we'll see when you demo it. Uh, oops, we broke something. That's why I should always test. What did we break? We didn't finish declaring the variable. Ah, so I put the action in the condition spot. So, let's cancel this. Copy, that actually goes there. Delete this. Start over here. So it's scene and the scene. Add action variable. Value of a scene variable. Name that variable speed. Set it to four. All right, now that we have that, let's check and see if we, we fixed our bug, and we did. All right, he's running, running, running. When he falls, he's in the jump. But he quickly runs out of ground. So now we need to work on moving, recycling the platforms. So we said when the platform gets over here to X position of negative 256, we wanted it to jump back to an X position over here. Um, our last platform was at 1632, so we'll start, well, the exit was 1632, so that's right here, so we'll start back here a little bit. So I'll add a new condition. And there's one where you can um, compare exposition. You don't need to write like an if statement, it's pretty nice. Um, compare exposition of an object object floor and when it is let's say less than or equal to negative 256 then our action will be to change the exposition so position exposition of an object floor equals say 16 Say sixteen sixty four. Let's test that. So now our player is running, 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 and that's where it restarts. And you can see now it just keeps going, but we're not changing anything. So very quickly a player is going to get bored because he's just doing the same thing over and over and over again. So let's adjust the widths so that these are different widths. We'll do that here as well. We'll add another action. And width. This is a tiled sprite, so we're adjusting the width of the tiled sprite of a floor. And we'll set it equal to, but we want to be different amounts each time. So we'll create a random. And we'll do integer in range. Minimum value is 32, because that's just one block wide. And then <clears throat> the biggest we said we wanted would be about 5. So that would be 160. So 5 times 32 is 160. Done. And we also want them to be um, random heights. So we'll add another action here. 
and this will be the y position of an object. And that object is our floor. Set it equal to, again, random, but within a range. And our minimum value, we said we were going to do um, 256 and our maximum 416. And that's the Y value. The um, Y is different because it starts at zero up top and, and gets bigger as you go down, um, which is a little weird. But you'll see if we look back here, the Y position of, of this one is 288. But if we go one lower, it's 416. So that's our bottom range and that's our top range. Those two there. So let's test it. Players running, jumping. Whoa, almost missed that jump. Ah, it's already hard. But you see now, different challenges are coming at me. Ooh, I messed up. You can see um, different sizes, different lengths, different gaps, different heights. So it'll be different every time through. Let's play again so you can see again. Make sure it's not too hard. Oh, nice save. Didn't say that one. Some of these are a little far apart, so I think I'm going to go back and on our uh, our original ones, let's just have it start with a little bit smaller gaps. That way the gaps won't ever get too big. And I can insert an extra floor piece here. See that's a little bit better. Keeps them from being too spread, far spread out. There's jumping. They're already recycling there, you see. They're coming out different widths, different heights, different challenge every time. Overlaps there a little. You can clean that up maybe later if you don't like the look of that. Whoa, that was a hard one. All right, so still challenging, which is good. You want the game to be challenging, but not impossible. I think that's what we've achieved there, which is good. Um, so let's see, is there anything else we need to do? We have a player uh, that can that can run and jump. We have the platforms moving and resetting. I don't think there is. I think that's pretty much an endless runner game. Um, the next steps would be, you know, you want to tell it uh, how the player dies. Um, but we'll do that in a different video. For now, if you like this video, please subscribe and click the little bell to know when the next one comes out. If you didn't like this video, man, I'm going to keep trying, so keep subscribing. Um, and as always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye.